But ba No, just kidding. Final countdowns next time. Oh, how was that? A Kino mirror. It was excellent. I was confused and excited the entire time. I'm looking at the Kano in the mirror. Um, I thought that was important to show everyone because these are two people that are doing extremely well on that hero. And I asked Feiyu, I was like, how many times do you play that a year? And he goes, maybe once. Yeah. So get that on screen. What is it called? On tape for everyone. And et cetera. Yeah. But no more Kano. Well, Eugene is still in the top eight, right? We're doing the other side. True that. We're going to see Alan Luber versus Zane Johnson. Yeah. And that's the one versus the five. I guess I didn't realize he won Swiss. Yeah. Colin put a, a valiant effort, but it was not enough. Alan Chavarin took down Del Taco. And Eugene, you saw what happened. I'm interested in what this is going to be. I think Zane can beat Bravos, but Alan is one of the best Bravos. He proved it at Nationals. He's the best Bravo in North America. And if you do want to take him down, come to AGE February and try to do it. I think he's the best Bravo in our area. And I, mean, I don't know if they're ready. Maybe we could go back to us for a bit and see our faces. That sounds good. Yeah, I like looking He's the best him. Bravo in North America. He's the best Bravo in SoCal. He's the best Bravo Western Hemisphere. I don't know if there's Eastern Hemispheres that are better. I don't, is he top five Bravos in the world? I, you got to say yes. Bravo is our highest person in the meta for top eight. I'm just saying Bravo a lot. Yeah, yeah. I, and, and you could say it a couple more times, and I don't think it would drive home just how dominant – that's a pun – this hero has been today um, because there were only six of them in the entire meta of 61 players, and three of them are in the top eight. That is a conversion rate that is off the charts. You could calculate it, but I dare you to. 50%. It's incalculable. Um, uh, well, 50% of... Okay, uh, that's great. Um, I'm getting a note to shift a little bit so that we fill the frame. No, they're talking to the husband outside or whatever. Oh, the husband's outside. Yeah. He's easily top five Bravos in the world, coming from another Bravo man, said Jamaica. Even though he has an illness, he is still contributing to our community. That's what we love to see in the chat. Let's see if they have this going yet. I. It's interesting that we switched to Showstopper. What is it called? Start? What is this? No, what is that? Showstopper. Called? No. I'm Showtime. Showtime. They switched the art to Showtime. Yes, so it that's is. That's a new asset. Yeah, yeah, and they've changed the assets for a couple Welcome to Wraith heroes, right? Like, Reinar is always Alpha Rampage instead of himself, right? Did that happen? Graphic? It, I think that's oh, that that is. Time. I get what you're saying now. Of some of these hero, it is their hero, and some of these people, it's not. Yes, yes, you follow. So, depending on who we think, where does where does Luber live? Lu uh, I, you He's keep saying local. Luber, but I think you're pronouncing Hong a little incorrectly. I mean, that's what he goes by on YouTube. Oh, understood, understood. <laughs> I'm I'm out of the loop. So he has one of the best Bravo channels to watch on YouTube. That's where I got the confidence to build his list and take it to ProQuest last time around. Uh, that did not end up working out for me because I found some crazy Dash players playing hold the line three times in one turn. Yeah, that's a thing. That was not fun. Um, that's not going to happen in Azalea Ace in the hole. If we look at defense reactions for Zane, not much. He does have three sink belows. Cool. Um, which can be pondered into at critical moments, like I believe he had in his lap. He already took down a Bravo in this top right. eight, right? And, and Marcus I is nothing to sneeze. No. Don't and sneeze at Marcus. He's nothing he doesn't to like it. What's another word we'd use in Flesh and Blood a lot? He's nothing to sink about. Yeah, exactly. He's nothing to go again about. True. You know no, saying? that's probably – that sounds a little more derogatory. It, Marcus <laughs> is good, and Zane just beat him. I saw it happen. He goes, the blood rot's going to do one dam – or the arrow's going to do one damage to you. You're going to have two left. He tried to block with his whole hand, but he got dominated, and then he couldn't pay for blood rot. So that's what happened. The blood rot killed the last Bravo. Can Zane do it again? Here we go. Here we go, indeed. Uh, Alan starting us off. Looks like he just kind of pitches away a D-React that he didn't really want to make a seismic surge and arsenal up. And you know why he didn't want it? He's got another sink below locked and loaded in his hand. He's too good. He's too good. When you draw well in this game, you're just better than your opponent. If you are Bravo 
and you're playing Azalea, the game plan is block out forever? Or is it block until we can guarantee the on-hit crush damage? I think it is block important on hits, right? Of which this probably is not unless Zane is holding on to a Rain Razors and is threatening a reload trigger. Um, he could also just have a bricky hand. That's the question in front of Alan. If Alan has a really good hand, um, which one red sink below maybe gums up his hand a little bit so he can't do anything too threatening to Zane. Bottom line, Alan just needs to evaluate whether or not he has a hand that will absolutely dumpster Zane's next turn and go for it um, if he feels like the risk is worth the reward. Um, and the key word you said was evaluate. And I think why is Alan one of the best Bravos? It's because of that word of he is the master at figuring out every piece of points to get ahead of their opponent when it comes to seismic surge. I think he he wrote a book I read about it on his YouTube. It's like it's a it's a short novel of two hours of how to play the hero. And the way he's book. talking about evaluating the seismic surges and how those work, I think is what sets him apart. So the evaluation will never he won't screw that up. Yeah, absolutely. And it is he talking about them in terms of evaluating like like, oh, I, I make a seismic here, and then it enables a four-cost attack on my next turn so that I can block out with X. It, like, is that kind of how he that's, thinks about that's it? That's like the pedestrian level thing. Not mm -hmm. not derogatory, but he's doing the, like, that's the, smart, that's the way that most people would look at it. Here's what it does to massage your turns and do some stuff. Like, yes, it always makes sense to make them as much as possible, but here's the... It's kind of like the chess idea of they're two steps ahead, and you're like, how am I losing? Absolutely. My opponent's two steps ahead, and I didn't know. And here comes Alan making another surge, sending a crippling crush. Um, this is exactly what we're talking about, right? He identified that Zane's Bolton shot was not a huge threat, holds back that clean block in the sink below, and goes, here's a crippling crush, which is a miserable card for Rangers to deal with especially Azalea, who has so many two blocks and can't really get that clean uh, brush off of the crush effect super easily. Brush the crush. Brush the crush. Um, looks like Zane is going to do we it. do find it. Mm -hmm. Fortuitously, with that sink below in Arsenal, that's number one. Um, so he's got two more get-out-of-jail-free cards in the deck. Um, that being said, he's committed a lot of cards to this block, and what's to stop Alan from drawing up and doing it again? True. I think the other thing that Alan would love to do the most is always have an Arsenal card so we don't get caught with a Codex. A Codex could maybe, now I don't have the right math, or there's an arrow I do want to block, and Codex kind of intimidates a card from my hand that I'll never see again. Yes, I can probably put a Crippling Crush back in my Arsenal, and the more I do that to Azalea, the worse it is for her. But Anytime you're losing a card from Codex, you're not having a good day. Absolutely. And so what do you think are the primary Arsenal targets on Allen's side of the board? Defense reactions until it's time where... What's the one that blocks from Arsenal? That is rem Remorseless. So oh, yeah. We d that's a thing. Like Remorseless is specifically written, I'm assuming, for the Bravo. Yes. Almost assuredly. Ooh, it looks like we have a dominated Spinal Crush here, which is so, so bad for Azalea. Wonder if Zane found another Sink Below to stick in that arsenal. He certainly had a lackluster turn. It looked like he was just kind of doing some setup, so maybe that's the situation he found himself in. I'm going to hope for our dear friend that uh, it is. When you play Azalea, you've, you've done it recently, right? Mm -hmm. Are you playing Ravenous Ravels in this match, or... Because the idea of you could get dominated, you you try you're trying to do as tall attacks, or are you trying to go wide against Bravo? Um, I think going, I, I think you mix in the ravenous rabbles personally because you you want to have situations that could potentially bait out pieces of the fridge. Um, what you really don't want is to let Bravo steamroll crush effects turn after turn after turn because that's when you lose, right? right? And so you kind of have to chip away at that equipment in moments that you can. And then when you do finally come in with that 
four uh four buff dominated arrow or whatever it is they don't have the fridge to just huck it in front of right. and then kill you on the next turn speaking of huck there goes six health hucked to the nether realm tragic tragic indeed zane is still holding on to his perch grapplers though teched in specifically for bravo so that he can you know maybe block out um a pesky dominated spinal crush uh with a sink below and a piece of boots um, we'll see. Our friend Lexi would always use Art of War to get around Bravo stuff, but Art of War not an Azalea Lewis. No, Art of War is kind of a weird card into Azalea, right? Because she can't go wide super well. Ooh. Oh my gosh, this is two crippling crushes in a. I'm sorry, there was a spinal in between, but this is the second crippling crush we've deployed this game. And that's a Bravo activation as well, using that six hundred dollar card, Alan. <laughs> Trying every, very hard to keep the AGE playmat nice and clean. Every Bravo main in the chat is saying this is one of the most disgusting things. We're going to go from 33 to 22 immediately. I'm guessing this is not how Marcus was drawing his cards. We're going to randomly get rid of a Lace and a Red in the Ledger. Red in the Ledger, ordinarily a horrible card for Azalea to have to discard, but honestly, it's pretty lackluster in the Bravo matchup. It could, it could stop the Dominate, though, right? It could stop the Dominate. It can stop the, the Seismic Surge generation, but <sighs> the difference between a Dominated Crippling Crush and a non-Dominated Crippling Crush is your turn is still over as Azalea, right? If I block out, I'm giving you all my cards and passing it back to you to do it to me again. If it's Dominated, I am taking all the damage, um, and it's still ruining my next turn, right? right. So... It furthers Alan's game plan, but either way, Azalea is feeling the burn. And you don't want to feel the burn in the top eight. Oh, Battering Bolt, take that. Comes in for eight. It's, if it connects, it's going to make Alan reveal his hand, and he's going to lose all non-action cards and lose life equal to them. Uh, it's probably not that big of a deal for Alan, at least the on hit. Um, he says, I do not care. Look at my hand. Oh. I have no non non action cards. Boulder drop. And I think it was interesting to see Zane shake his head and try to blink a bit. Like maybe if I do this, I can wake up from bad. this horrible yeah. nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, we will see a star. S we won't. We're gonna yeah. spread them out a bit with a couple of attacks. Start with some rouse the ancients first for seven. I think Alan's thinking he can just he can afford to just put pressure on the life total here because Zane is um this is probably his last opportunity to just eat a ton of life right because right. then you're then you're in the Macho Grande range then you're in the Dominated Spinal Crush range where you just die and technically thirteen damage is more than ten I do love Eugene laughing in the background he has been smiling every single time busting a gut over there. Somebody has probably lumined at him or something. And he's playing against Alan, who is just such a fun guy to right. play against, right? Everybody having a good time here at AGE 1. <laughs> AGE January 2nd. The second time. Yes. Um, the sequel. What can Zane do to get out of 7 into 5 into 6? Oh, if my there's gosh. A if there's a swing afterwards. Oh that is disgusting. Gosh. An 18 damage turn. Like, I think this is what I'm saying when... I have never seen a Bravo rouse into E-Strike into Hammer, and this is a normal day at the office for Alan. This is why he's better than you. This is why he's the best in North America. I've n I legitimately have never seen that. Yeah, and I've I don't think Zane... Bravo for a while. <laughs> I don't That's think suggested. Zane has either because his head is in his hands. He's crying. Let me see this codex. Despite the fact that he's showing a codex of frailty oh. at the beginning of his turn. Oh, that hurts. That was... That was a killing right there. Yeah. And he's pretty smart to realize to not make a seismic for next turn. <laughs> Just send it all. <laughs> that was an 18 damage turn without a blood rush. Jeez. Imagine if every Bravo played like this. This hero would have Living Legend 15 months ago. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Bravo is such a weird matchup, right? Like, when you're going up against it and you're an aggro player... This is, this is what you fear every time you sit across from a Bravo, right? But it doesn't always shake out this way. Sometimes they can have all the D-reacts in one hand, 
all the really scary crush attacks in one hand, it's kind of a mixed bag. And the worst possible scenario is that you just see something devastating like this over and over and over again, and you never play the game. Right. And Zane's like, hey, I'm not going down without making an arrow for 11 at least, maybe 14. And and as you critically, as you mentioned before, Allen this time is not able to set up the arsenal um, despite his very massive turn on the last turn. So this Codex is going to rip a card out of his hand. Uh, what do you think he finds out of that graveyard? Crippling crush immediately. <laughs> <laughs> so, or you just E-strike for seven next turn, you pressure the whole life, and you go, whatever. Yeah, two card seven is not bad in this case. Looks like we have a read the glide path, a lace with frailty, and then an infecting shot coming in. Don't so forget the premeditate. Oh, I'm sorry. There's a premeditate on there. I didn't realize it because it was signed so beautifully. Three, six, nine plus five with two on the extra is 16 damage arrows if all damage is taken. That would put Alan at 14, which would still be double Zane's life total. Yeah, and <laughs> so he can discard one here. He can block for six and then instead only take eight when he's at 30 and then send a two card seven. That's disgusting. <laughs> That's so gr Well, I'm sorry. It'll be a two-card six because of the frailty check. Oh, of course. Okay. Um, so Zane won't die, and he still has his perch grapplers up. But, yeah, that looks like the most efficient play here. I think this is why Azalea always would run into an Oldham or a Bravo when she had less tools. And it, it is – I think he played an extremely good game in the top eight to get here. So I don't want to be like – there's no way you could beat a Bravo because he just did it. But when you see those hands line up like that, it's like how, like what card, like is judge, jury, executioner going to be the difference? Yeah, I guess that's a good question. So many of the Bravo hands make efficient use of their cards despite dominate, right? Like we see the red unmovable come out there and... Cause he did, did he just also full block that? I think he did. <laughs> 14 damage. Oh, my gosh. Said, not only am I going to push you around as hard as possible, I'm going to block. I believe that's probably the second biggest arrow he sent today. There's probably at least one that got 15 or 16 on it. Yeah, I think we saw another 14 earlier. Okay, we flipped the endless arrow. This is the top comeback. Top. This is it. What do you have, Zane? Eugene's going to look over at Zane. Zane's going to look over at Eugene. Zane's going to be like, it's not as bad as it looks. I got him right <laughs> where I want him. <laughs> Dude. This is what beating Evan by 40 will do to you. Yeah, absolutely. It puts Evan's um, taint on him, I suppose. Okay. <laughs> that, was, that was a poor choice of words, <laughs> I'm willing to admit. Oh, my goodness. So, Luber, he is in the drivers here. We're going to see how much damage Zane can do. I think – do we have Gogan from Perch Grapplers no matter what, right? Like, No. What is you have to activate them and destroy them, and he's going to have to wait to use them on defense. But if you're trying to do something – okay, we're going to get a Dominator Arrow. Yeah, we are. Okay. <clears throat> he could activate the Perch – oh, this is, an, this is a great choice, actually. Fatigue Shot – makes it so that Alan's next attack will be very much less scary because it's going to reduce, if it hits, it's going to reduce the first attack action card he plays on his turn by half of its base power. So right? you're telling me Starstruck goes to five? Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. Starstruck won't crush what about crippling if he crush? blocks with one card. Does it go to five or six? That will go to six because it's rounded up. Whoa. Yeah. Luber cannot let this hit. So your scary crush effects, I can throw one card in front of it and be fine. Right. Well, that's pretty nice. Especially if you dominate it. How many buffs does he have in hand? It ha it can only be two max. Okay, cool. So it's just going to be one. He's going to save a card from our for Arsenal. Eight, Eight dominate. You really hope Alan doesn't have... We know he doesn't have the red unmovable in Arsenal, right? Because that was... Um, the E strike that he got from the Codex of Frailty. He said, I'll take five. I don't care that you're going to have fatigue up because I'm just probably going to pummel you for game. He could do, <laughs> he could also do two E strikes here. E strike from Arsenal with uh, the go again, I suppose, which eats the goes fatigue to two, shot, goes to two. Then he sends the E strike for seven. 
um, or just refreshes the... Okay, so he tucks the other E-Strike into the arsenal. This is going to eat up the fatigue shot trigger. It's pretty smart. Absolutely. I Honestly, if you wanted to get better at Flesh and Blood and there was a camera that watched Alan play every game of his life, that's the one I would spend money on. Yeah, absolutely. Not going to lie. He's such a clean player, and he always looks comfortable. Right. Um, when you walk by and he's playing, he's just same kind of chill, easy smile, having the time of his life. Like, I think I would brag about losing to him by less than 20. Dear Diary, <laughs> today I lost to Alan. And I felt really him. good about myself. I, I, I only lost by 15 to Alan Luber. Here's Command and Conquer, one of the best cards against people that care about arsenals, also known as Rangers. Yep. And uh, not caring at all about that fatigue shot hitting because he That's already, already over. Yeah, he wasted it with the uh, E strike. So even smarter of a choice um, with information he didn't know about Zane's turn, right? Yeah, and that is a thing where it's like, if you're wondering as a brand new player, do I need to buy E strike, E strikes, and command and conquer right away? That was E strike and command and conquer. That's oh, so you're saying they're hundred dollars? Yeah, one hundred dollars. That's the key, baby. Worth it to uh, stuff an azalea back into the ace in the hole. You know what mm, I'm saying? True, true, true. So that's a two-card block from Zane, weakening his turn massively. Azalea is just not feeling great with one card in Arsenal, Ace especially up. when it's a one-cost arrow, which means that if he wants to do anything on his turn and that is not a zero-cost arrow on top, he's going to have to pitch that last card in his hand. Not great, Bob. Not great, Bob. Alan would immediately just go from 25 down to 5 and kill Zane immediately. Yeah, I see a Thunderquake in hand. That's already pretty scary. Zane's still got the boots up, so it's not a guaranteed lethal because I think it's in the blue. Yeah, there's no way Red Thunderquake happened today. It did uh, with um, Trent. Oh. Actually, oh. yeah. That wow. was one of those really cool plays that comes from running Trench, right? You block with all your cards except for a blue and a red Thunderquake. Kabamo, Tenno. Kabamo. Kabamo, Tenno. This is the pitch for five. There's uh, all kinds of stuff right now. You can't use. Yeah, Zane's Defense shaking his reactions. head like, man, if I had found that zero cost arrow on top, you would be at less life when you kill yeah. me. All right. And now we got three cards and a seismic surge. There's a pitch to do it all over again. That doesn't turn on Remorseless. This will turn on Remorseless. He's like, yeah, 23 to 22. I'm going to get every point of damage I can. My mom is watching. I want her to be proud. Uh, Zane's mom has turned off the feed. <laughs> She is unwilling to watch her son be decimated by yet another Bravo. And Zane's going, Mom, why didn't you watch the last game? I just destroyed a Bravo. Oh my I know I can do it. So, going to take a couple points there. Seismic made for next turn. You need to pressure Bravo right now. We see the codex. That's going to help. That's a good, yeah, that's a good if start. If we play a buff first. Oh, that's right. fine too. That's not bad. Except oh, for three. That's a yellow. What are the odds that Alan just goes, whatever? 100%. I'll take it. 100%? Yeah. You got to hope he doesn't have three blues in hand. It helps if he blocks right now. Then he won't be able to do the... I mean, I don't know if you can tell there's a codex. I'm assuming if I can... T I saw it already. But mm -hmm. if somebody's attacking you with the Ravenous, I don't think... The idea is that they would not play something afterwards because they would use the Ravenous to load an arrow. Exactly. He so there's the yeah, Codex. There that gets rid of a card from his hand. So he won't be able to grab the good attack and immediately use it unless he seismic surges and keeps two blues and then crippling crushes, which is about to happen, which is a, so smart to get the fatigue shot. And we have the tunic to use it. Zane is like, I know what I'm doing. You've been yeah. talking about Alan for 20 minutes now, but I'm Zane. I'm on Team Stroop. 
I got 32nd place once somewhere. I think it was Baltimore. Maybe it was 33. I don't remember. But he's a good player in his own right, and I'm going to claw my way back in. That was an amazing impression. I felt like I was talking to Zane right there. I was like, how are you Hi, in here? Me, I thought you were Johnson. out there. I'll load, Death Dealer. <laughs> I'll, I'll scratch my brow and hope for death. Mm. I think Alan's realizing that maybe the easiest one I always grab isn't the smartest. And he's doing the word evaluate right now of whatever card he gets. If you're a Bravo player, write this down right now. Because what do you think it's going to be? I don't even want to guess. I'm going to be wrong. Like, it's going to be a, a go again one. I'm a, E strikes on top? I'll, I'll use that as a. I think it's E strike. Because you could block a couple cards, or he has to discard from here. He's touching it, Blake. He's touching it. So you block for three and then E strike for seven, but it gets halved. That doesn't feel that great. Indeed. Does. Fatigue shot work on hammers. It Quick. does not. Okay. It's attack action cards, so he could just go for the create a seismic surge, swing an Othos. But you know what does touch an Othos is the frailty token. Um, oh. And five is a little less scarier than uh, six. We've got Bravo chat saying choke slam would be pretty good. I don't know if we've seen Alan block with the choke slam yet. I know he hasn't played one as an attack yet. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't. He's got one in hand. Um, maybe he's thinking, maybe I can figure out a way to play this. The other Bravo chatter says, CNC is pretty good. He also he also can just be like, this card that I got for Arsenal can be used later. I can just use this unmovable in my hand to block out this fatigue shot. But then you're giving the turn back to an Azalea. Uh, with a full grip and an arsenal, which is there was a choke slam available. What is going on? No, he just discarded it. Oh, right? okay, okay. Yeah, to the so it'll be available for the next Codex of Frailty. Which, if you're Zane, you're just hoping that happens at this point. I don't think I think Alan should block because we have the civic steps. Is it worth giving a quicken token to make sure my command and conquer can come in for six? Yes. Actually, Command and Conquer would be five. I don't even know if it's Command and Conquer. I don't. I, what did he I grab? Th I think he took the E Strike after all. Okay. Yeah. Then pay attention, Blake. Uh, the E Strike would be six if you buffed it up. Yeah, exactly. Kind of getting around the text on Fatigue Shot, basically, right? Because the buffed power is not affected by the halving right. of the Fatigue Shot. So it'll get Alan knocked down to three plus two. two. Never mind. Yeah, so it looks like he's going to deploy. Oh, no, he just sends a note, those for three. That's an interesting one, because not only... Zane could just take this, which does put him in really scary range for pretty much any of Alan's dominated attacks. Just use an extra arrow and block this out, right? Yeah, right? There's no, there's no point in giving every dominate kills me. At least make him work for it. Absolutely. Girl, you better work. Girl, you better work. It does Alan play Citadel? Let's look at this DRS for him. <laughs> There's two Sigil of Solace. Is, do you play that against Azalea? I bet not. I bet You're not too. I, yeah, I think that just extends the game longer than you want it to. I think you just keep up the pressure. Which, I mean, there's no question that Zane's got a lot of pressure on him here. Uh, the fact that he has stood this long against a veteran Bravo player that has just been chaining crippling crushes right. and spinal crushes is a testament I'm, to how I'm good he is. I'm dead already uh, if I play this game. Yeah. Good for Zane. Proud of you, Zane. Great job, Zane. Somebody won or lost in the background. We could probably text one of those people to ask who it was. Alan is smiling. Eugene is looking stern and scratching his back. Which makes me think he went for the combo and found a blue on top. Cool. We I blocked. With we blocked with a yellow. I remember That's the Raging that. Onslaught. That's yeah, a really valuable card for her because it's a popper in the yellow, right? Um so we cross wrap, we reveal that is looking like a yellow Bolton shot. Which that remember that from earlier because that what's that's what made the Ravenous Rabble for three, right? Right. Yeah, so true. And then got put into the arsenal from the ponder token. So smart. So it comes back to bite him twice. 
no, it, it could be a really good card on this turn uh, and allows him to go wide, which kind of forces Alan to block to put a ceiling on Zane's turn and then just send like an Anothos or something on his, which is honestly the best case scenario for Zane at this point. Kind of no matter what he sends Alan's way, Alan is always going to be knocking on the door with an Anothos for four, um, re regardless of what cards Zane is able to rip out of his hand, I think. This is Deadeye. No text good on there <laughs> besides three, which sucks because I wish I could crow's nest, but it's not going to work out. Sure. The nice thing about the no text buff is that Bolton Shot now has go again and has an on hit, which is going to make Alan think twice about just saying, yeah, hit me for six. I'm at 20. I don't care. He does care. He still has an, uh, Zane still has an activation of Death Dealer, so... It's not like he can't load more arrows this turn if he's got them in hand. Uh, furthermore, activating Death Dealer is going to generate more cards, maybe keep the arsenal for next turn. Zane's got to be thinking at some point here that he's going to be blocking with that Skullbone Crosswrap, though. So maybe stuffing a card into arsenal every single turn is not as valuable because he knows he's going to start getting some really scary Dominate effects coming his way. What's going through your block mind, Alan? He's just thinking, this card could kill him. This card could kill him. Oh, that card would be more fun to see kill him. I love Civic Steps because normally it's just mindless block. But this Civic Steps has stuck around when it could have been a really good block a couple times. And I like the idea of... To win this game, you have to evaluate what that Quicken token means. And for some, like, you're not going to play Null Rune against Azalea, but I'm going to face up, show you Civic Steps, and I'm probably not going to play that against you either. Absolutely. Because it's so good half the time against you. Flip over a buff and an arrow that goes back into Graveyard, not Graveyard, back into my hand, which I could play this again even if I full block you. But this is seven that could turn into nine. This is a fantastic situation for Zane. The resources work out so perfectly. And the reset on the arsenal is so important, right? Because the number one thing Azalea wants to do at the start of her turn is activate Skullbone, cross wrap, flip a card in arsenal. So by threat... Get some info. Exactly. By threatening the Endless Arrow, uh, he's threatening far more than seven damage, right? He's threatening momentum. Um, and Helen really doesn't want... Zane to have any momentum. He just wants to keep chaining these crush effects. Dominate one for the win. And when we say keep chaining, it actually hasn't happened in a couple turns. That's a good point. Zane has been the chainer. Absolutely. Um, and he only needs one point of damage to get across. That was one thing that I thought was always funny of joking of like, imagine if it wasn't crush and you only had to hit with one. It's like, no, let's not imagine that. Yeah, that's a really <laughs> painful universe that I don't want to be yeah. a part of. We're going to see the second half of Crater Fist. And then two cards that we're going to kill Zane are going to keep Alan alive instead. And that's great for Zane. He got to chip six damage this turn and significantly weaken Alan's turn. I think I see a CNC in Alan's hand, though. Um, which is a little less effective now that Zane has no arsenal, right? Because the yeah we don't get the we card have no back hit. in Arsenal because we did not let the endless arrow hit. So me, uh, yeah, we I got don't know. Three block on equipment for Allen, but what do we have? We know about the E strike. Now this can come in for full, or it can come in for a little bit. Probably gonna come in for seven because he's got a card to throw into his arsenal. Usually. You want to go go again if you have more gas in your hand, which we know he doesn't. He's got nothing in the pitch zone and too expensive of cards to use. You use the draw card in this situation to reset your arsenal ostensibly because the extra card on your next turn is going to be more valuable than the plus two that it gets from the buff, right? But he's got the card to reset, so here it comes for seven. And if you're a person at home being like, why are we not maybe seismic surging to make sure we can do something gross later? Is it that's probably a defense reaction? Or is there, I would never seismic because I always want to at least have an arsenal card to make my opponent think twice about their turn. Yeah, it's a good question. If he had gone for the seismic Anothos 
uh, play this turn, he would be coming in for six instead of seven and still have a card in his arsenal, right? So I don't know. I think the seven breakpoint is like trying to bait out some perch grapplers uh, and make Zane be greedy about his next turn. And then they're not there when he comes in for that dominated finisher. Um I don't know. Seven is just always a scary number in this game because it's so weird to block out cleanly, right? When's the last time you saw Zane be greedy, though? That's a good question. I don't think ever. Well, he did just beat Evan forty to zero. You would have to every, imagine every there was time I've seen there. him. Whenever there was a pizza party, he always gets two slices, just like we said. Yeah, and he takes other people's pepperonis. <laughs> just for the vegetarians, you know, he's. Oh, it's actually a service. He I understand. Uh, what a philanthropist. He's not greedy. There's a lot of things I know about Zayn. He's not greedy. He does seem to be wanting to hold on to these. Oh, no. Here, co here comes the two-card block. Takes two. Not good. Yeah, another weird thing about Azalea is just the number of two blocks you have to deal with, right? And speaking of blocking out cleanly. What do you have, Zayn? A buff? Nope, a ravenous. And then okay. is it the final codex? If you're rooting, it's the final codex or it's a zero cost arrow that we can use our bullseye on. Yeah. Four for Ravenous is the best one we got, but this does feel like it's the last stand of Zane Johnson. Yeah, he can't even, unfortunately, he doesn't have his tunic up, so it's not like he can just go Death Dealer into the Endless Arrow, find the Codex of Blood Rot like he did. Um, a couple turns ago. Just hoping to chip, chip away. Alan goes ahead and throws a card in front of the Ravenous hey. Rabble, though. What do you got, Bravo? I do... Oh, no, that's not a Macho Grande. That's an Imposing Visage. Um, I see a Choke Slam. We're back on Imposing Visage in the Luber list? I was supposed to take that out for Buckle last time. Don't write off that card. I think Buckle was in for Lexi, and now that Lexi's gone, we're putting an Imposing Visage back in. Mm. And by we're, I mean all those rising up and playing Bravo. Bravo players, rise up. Because you were downtrodden before? That's just his tagline for YouTube. Gotcha. Not that I watch YouTube or podcasts about Flesh and Blood, but got to keep my streak right. <laughs> <laughs> we see the seismic. That is a CNC. Oh, I don't actually know What's what he put on the bottom with that Easter egg. If you seismic, it's almost telling your opponent, like, I'm thinking this game is, I'm not going to kill you. Like, anytime you're seismic in, you're like, I'm planning on having an. Oh. This is interesting. Now we're going, do you have command and con Or. That sucks because if that's a. Is that a defense reaction in there? I, we're assuming that's what that was. Because that makes the only thing pass earlier make sense for good stuff. If it's not a defense reaction, then it's just that just sucks altogether. Yeah, because Alan is not getting value out of one of his cards. The bluff is there. Oh, I probably shouldn't talk this loud. I, there's like six doors in between me. There, the bluff is there of are you going to block everything to not die to pummel but at this point it's like i have to lose the pummel yeah I, it's fine and alan's got to know that zane is a good enough player to know when he can and when he can't play around pummel right like i, I don't think this is a value play in terms of like i'm gonna bluff this pummel and make you make a mistake i think it's just probably the best hand alan had to work with because it was like zane, zane didn't really have a strong turn the last turn right it was like ravenous rabble arsenal pass alan seemed ready to block and you wouldn't do something stupid like, let me activate my hero power just to get this card on my hand because you want to at least bluff the pummel. Yeah, that's that's a really good point as well. So we're going to keep these cards for next time. Zane, thinking about just taking it and going home. This is always such... Ooh. Yeah, Ooh. here we go. We're going to go for the whole thing. I don't need my arsenal card. I think I can get back in this game with these four cards in hand. And nothing, that's sick. This is the Zane Johnson difference. This is how you beat Bravos. Loses a pretty important buff as a result. 
He probably just didn't have a... Oh, I see a Rain Razors. That card doesn't block. That might be part of his decision. Are we blind as Elian? Are we trusting our cards in hand? What is the thought process here? I don't think you can blind Azalea because in order to get a card into Arsenal to do that, you have to activate your bow. So if you flip a non-arrow, you do nothing and pass, right? Unless you have like a knock the death whistle to start it out with. Uh, I think I saw... Yeah, I'm pretty sure I saw a Rain Razors in there. That is quite possibly our pitch card for the turn. Azalea's pitched that card a lot. Yeah. Which I always thought was interesting. Of I'm used to that card killing me or end up being six points of damage. But anytime you're pitching a Rain Razors, I'm like, great. Yeah. Here comes the bullseye. I think this will start with a Bolton shot just based on him touching that card first. That means we're going to be going wide. Just kidding. It's a drill shot. So what is in hand here? None of these have go again. None of these are razor reflexible. No, there is no razor reflex. What are these two cards in hand that we didn't block with? He's it probably just going to throw the rain razors out there, right? Because he couldn't block with that. An arsenal. Okay. Yeah, exactly. That makes a little more sense. But you can also be like, it's double rain razors. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is such a rough position to be in because you're just... Like, when you're on Zane's side of the table, you're doing your best, but you know you're not threatening enough to, like, make it so Alan doesn't just right. dominate and attack at you the next turn. So Alan's just sitting there thinking, like, Alan's sitting there thinking, like, how do I, how could I possibly lose this game right. if I take all this damage, right? Um, and Because that Arsenal card is not great to do your hero power and dominate, but if you have an attack in Arsenal and a pummel looking at you, it doesn't really matter what cards. You only have to do one point of damage. Honestly, you can dominate and win. Yeah, exactly. All right, all right. Exactly. I think I think Alan probably has it in hand. He's just making, sh you know, doing his due diligence, using that critical word that we've been talking about, evaluation. Evaluation. To make sure he just doesn't do anything really dumb and lose. Well, we're blocking nine. We are playing an honest game. We're going to rain the razors to not... To get Excellent. in by one. None of those. Oh, there is a Seek and Destroy. So if you're planning on using that Arsenal later, you got to use it now. But now here's a... We're going to play this for six, or is it eight? Because I believe that's a blue, right? We all said it was a blue that's earlier. that's eight. So it would be six if it's if it's a blue choke slam. Uh, It looks red, it red to me, yeah. Eight's pretty good. It is not bad, and Chokeslam is such a difficult card for Azalea to deal with. If it crushes, forget about that whole buff, buff, buff plan that Azalea loves to do, right? Because Chokeslam's crush effect is your cards can't gain power uh, during your next turn. But he would die first, so we Th don't care. That is a very good point. If it crushes, you die. That is a very good point. Um, Alan threatening the most valuable uh, on-hit effect in Flesh and Blood, mm. which is death. Is give me, you can go pick up your third and fourth place winnings and I'll go to the finals. What I'm hope is not happening is people go, oh, we got to go to, okay, that makes sense. I hope there's not a scenario where it's too late and we want to go to San Diego, but we'll see what happens in the finals. Want to go to San Diego. Somebody, in, cause somebody, somebody from San Diego is in the finals. No yeah, matter what absolutely. Happens. We're going to premeditate in Codex one final time. Which is a great time for Zane to be doing this because Alan has that open arsenal. He's going to have to lose one card from his hand. This reminds me of one of my other favorite games to watch, and it happened exactly a year ago, January AGE. It was the finals there of Craig versus Ioli, of Ioli's playing this brand new Lexi list. And it looked like he was going to absolutely get blown out. And yeah, he was comes sitting. And back after, like, Craig was up 35 to, like, four, and Craig wins that game with basically five health left. Yeah, also a really oppressive Guardian game where Craig was just chaining together those really big crush effects over and over again. So, Alan's looking for stuff of what is... Last time we did E-Strike, what are we doing this time? Yeah, it looks like he's got a couple reds in hand, so it's probably going to have to be somewhat of a similar situation. 
um, where he just sends a really nasty seven uh, on his turn, or maybe refresh the arsenal. Finds the CNC, so he intends to keep one of these cards in his hand to pitch for that, I would imagine. San Diego is showing out for sure. We haven't had a pummel from Allen go across yet, right? We haven't even Where seen him block they? with one. Oh, there's that sigil that we were talking about earlier. Cool. Is it possible he's not running the pummels in this matchup? Because I don't I think mean, we've seen a pitch. I don't think we've seen a block with a pummel. We're blocking seven here. That'll block everything. Ponder happens no matter what because it was codex. Mm -hmm. So when we read the book... We're going to get a Ponder. Here's Command and Conquer. I get to Seismic, which is super important. Do you have two arrows to block this? Or do you need three cards of your four to get rid of this? Only comes in for five, so Zane can get away Ooh, with an arrow and a buff. Two. That, which look is at this design. We're all Holy about the crap. small victories here. That's so cool. <laughs> but it's quite possible that Zane is staring down a hand of two blocks. Maybe finding another one of those rain razors at the absolute worst time. When's the last time you read a book and someone got weaker because you read it? Um, the last time I played Le Lexi, I think. Oh, okay. Yep. We're going literal here. Or no, no, no. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I read Harry Potter, and that was the last time I saw my my great ankle. Yeah, my sister just faded into the distance oh, no. once Harry Potter came out. Here's a command and conquer. Eugene won the other one. Oh my gosh. So my boy is ascending. Halo. That's crazy. That tree fitty cash prize is coming closer. Oh yeah, you weren't here the last time. I'm I'm gonna get a cash prize oh, from wow. Justin if Eugene wins, because I called it. Dang. Rip Allen says <laughs> Del Taco in the chat who uh anything. Del Taco has some um what's that called? Uh something syndrome where you fall in love with the people that hurt you. Stockholm syndrome. Del Taco has some Stockholm Syndrome in the chat. Love it on Allen, who decimated him and threw him out of the tournament. I think it's worth looking through a graveyard if you're playing for hundreds of dollars. I don't know what you're looking for. He's got to be looking for... He doesn't for have a fourth codex. No, he doesn't. He's played all of his codexes. He's probably just thinking, like, what could I possibly draw off Death Dealer? Right. Um, he's probably counting his buffs, right? He's probably calculating his turn have to more be... more arrows than buffs left or more buffs yeah, than Yeah, exactly. Because with all of his pieces of equipment gone, once he's activated Death Dealer, there's no other way to get cards in the arsenal. Um, there's no other way to fire off more arrows. So it, it, whatever he draws has got to count, if that's the way he's building his turn, right? It's got to count. It's got to do... F what's 12 plus 12 block? It's got to do... He needs an arrow that does 24 damage. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> We've seen these LSS. Give me an arrow that does twenty four. As long as I it has the clause that it, what you call does regicide. If this doesn't kill your opponent, <laughs> you die. That could balance it. New new in from the design desk at LSS. Yeah. Here's an arrow that huh. does regicide. Long shot regicide with no downside and twenty four damage. No. Brian Gottlieb, please Same. make this happen for us. Let the Rangers get ahead. Zane, what are we doing? We see a dead eye. That's a really good blocking card here. I think, does he remember it's five? He has to, right? Probably. He the dice. He's blocking five. Yep, exactly. The frailty does all the work there. Saves him an entire card. But what are the cards, Zane? Show us the cards. Blind Azalea. No. Oh, really? Finds a bolt and shot. shot. It looks like it might be in the blue, though, which is less than ideal. As long as it's an arrow, we got ourselves a chance. I tell you what. I tell you what. He might have honestly wanted to find a buff there, depending on what's in his hand, because then you can send out the buff, play your death dealer, find another card, because he's got the resource card here, right? Okay, he That'll goes. Help. He's paying for... The crow's nest. Look at him go. Yeah, blue bolt this and shot, though. This is dominated. It's only coming in for five, which Alan can just throw one card plus his remaining two pieces of equipment in front of and cover up. So I think the likelihood of this dead eye trigger actually hitting and being relevant is zero. Because um, I don't think Alan would let that happen. As he lets that happen. <laughs> no way. 
<laughs> he took it. Now he sure I, did. Now I get to look at your hand and pick a card. And make you discard it. He's like, he's like <laughs> now he no chooses. No way, no way. Now he's like, okay, to I'm going to read this card. After taking yes. the damage. Get rid of the pummel or you die. Oh, I can't talk that loud. Get rid of the pummel or you die. Get rid of the pummel. He, he's like, I know you want the pummel gone. Yeah, because he can't. The Terra Sunder is also terrifying, but he knows he can't deploy it because he doesn't that have the resources to make it happen. Do anything for him. There's no attack in there either. There's no, oh, I can dominate for game. The best he can do. He can't even. What's the other blue? Okay, we can swing a Nothos for six. I was like, if he's yeah. about to swing a Nothos for four, disaster mode for everyone that's rooting for. I this is know. fascinating to me. Do you think he meant to let that hit and like understood the I dead eye he, trigger? I think he said, "Oh crap!" Yeah. You get to choose. Yeah, I think so too. But that would make me think less of Alan, which I don't. So I, I maybe, or not. What I'm, tr what am I trying to say? I don't think Alan would ever fall into that of like, oops. <laughs> Because he's that good of a player, I'd be like, wait, what? Absolutely. Well, here comes a fairly lackluster turn from Zane. He had to load a one-cost arrow with a red, which means that no matter what he draws, he's going to have to pitch it to send that one-cost arrow. Now the equipment but suite comes out, comes probably a with a one-card lock. There it is. Pass me that quick token. That tells me that Alan has got some sort of dominate to send Zane's way and close this out, send us to our final match. Even the best can misplay after a nine-hour day. There's the dominate. There's the spinal. Saint gets the biggest moral victory of I got him to under eight, which Dude, when, that's exactly seven. When he was sitting at like 24, 30 life, right. um, which is no small feat, and Bravo is so, so scary for any ranger that is uh, sitting right. across the table from him. So honestly, just like I said a little bit, if you're a big Bravo player, pay attention to Allen. If you're an Azalea player, pay attention to Zane. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. He has three games today that you can go back and watch. One of them's hilarious because it's basically watching him play Felt Table against Tekla Boston. Oh, gosh. Um, there's this game where you could be on the back foot and see what you do and whatever. Let's see our winner, though. Let's see what he's doing. Oh, nothing to really change. I, I was expecting to win. He's he's the best in the world. And he's going to beat you. To go for, through Swiss of a 61 and win in the finals would be insane. Yeah. So let's hope they're going to play it out instead of going to New Zealand. Or what is it? San Diego? Um, let's do this real quick. That's the semifinals. It's pretty late. 9-17. Boy, howdy. We'll see what happens. We started at noon? Something like that, Nine yeah. Nine hours ago. It's been a long day. Maybe lunch break should have been 45 seconds, but... <laughs> we'll figure it out. This is the first of the year, so any kinks that we have will get straightened out. Unless the cards and heavy hitters are bad, and then we're we're putting up shop. We're we're not even gonna do two through seven, you know. Yeah, no no blue sixes for brute means we're, we just we're throwing we're all here. the cameras out, burning our cards, and sending this game back to New Zealand. No, 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 we won't say. What's cool though is Bravo gets a whole gets seventeen more cards. Yeah, so oh, he's only going to get cool. better for any individual decision that he's currently bad at. There'll probably be a new card that he could play. If you're losing to tall cards, you could play stacked in your favor and just block nine damage with one card or yeah. something with like that. It is interesting. It's only going to get worse for Bravo haters. The the way those new guardians are built, though, there's a world where they just kind of make cards that don't really fit the Bravo mold because of Wage, because of Clash, right? Or Overpower. Does, does Bravo need an Overpower card, or that would be not great? Oh, the number one versus the number two. It was always going to be this way, Blake. This is Alan's girlfriend, and super proud of him. And I'm super proud. I didn't see it because the other heart. Thank you for tuning in. Oh, that's so fun. Someone will tell Alan, and he'll use that to win the finals and get you some teddy bear money. I don't know. He would buy teddy bears, but yeah. This is a short break. We'll see you immediately afterwards, and there'll be the finals where someone will win it all.